Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith, Photog J the Great. Today we're going to be talking about something that I see a lot of people struggle with. Um, I realize that not as many people print their photographs these days, but for those of us out there that do, this is something that you'll no doubt come across at some point or another. Uh, you get the perfect shot all lined out, and uh, you know you get your frame picked out, you get the spot on the wall picked out, and as soon as you print your, print your photograph you realize that something important in the picture has now become cropped off. Um, this is something that this is something that I see on a very very frequent basis. Um, the reason that that happens is because different images have different aspect ratios. Um, that is a different uh, lit length to width relationship. Uh, most digital cameras these days, especially digital SLRs, um, have a given aspect ratio that they capture images in. Uh, for most cameras, that's a 3-2 ratio. Now, on certain cameras, you can go into your uh, camera menu system and you can change that. Uh, for example, on like uh, some of the newer uh, upper-end Nikons, say for example something like a D800 or a D4, you can actually go in and make the camera take a picture in a 5-4 ratio. Um, a 5-4 ratio is what we have in like a 8 by 10 for example. Uh, whereas an image size like a 4 by 6 is going to adhere to a normal 3-2 uh, ratio. Um, the biggest thing to keep in mind, which this is going to be something that we're going to take a look at in Photoshop in just a moment here, um, but the biggest thing to keep in mind is whenever you take a photograph uh, with your digital SLR, if you know that your image is going to be printed at a 5-4 ratio size, such as an 8 by 10, um, just be sure to leave a little bit of extra space left over so that way once you crop your image um, you have enough room. Uh, the other option for you is to actually print the image in a size that does fit a 3-2 ratio. So for example instead of printing an 8x10 you could print an 8x12 and you would have virtually no cropping at all in your image. Um, the only thing to keep in mind about that is Unfortunately, it's still much, much harder to find frames and mats for 8x12 than it is for an 8x10. Uh, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some images in Photoshop, and you guys will be able to see exactly what I mean. Okay, so taking a look at this image here, um, we are in Photoshop CC right now, and I have my crop tool selected. First of all, I'm going to show you guys what not to do with your images. Um, a lot of people will just they'll just do what we call free cropping an image, which is basically when you just pull your crop out, you know, and you just pull it out to some random size and say, well, I think this right about here looks good. Uh, the problem with that is, you know, you have no idea what size you've cropped your image to. Um, you have no way of knowing what ratio it is or anything like that, and so whenever you get it printed, you end up with some cropping that's usually going to be undesirable. So instead of free cropping your image, in Photoshop here you'll notice that you can select this drop down menu and you can actually tell Photoshop to crop to a certain ratio. So up here we have a few options. Uh, we've got the original ratio, we've got 1 to 1 which is a square, we've got 4 to 5 which is like an 8 by 10, 5 by 7 and so forth. Um, for this example I'm going to just go ahead and pick 4 by 5, assuming that we're printing an 8 by 10 image here. So once I do that, <clears throat> notice that we end up losing, we end up losing quite a bit of quite a bit of uh, information in this photo. Um, but because I have quite a bit of room around our subject here, I've got a good bit of space above her head, and a good bit of space down here below her arms. We can still crop this and get a really good result overall. Um, as I mentioned before. Most of my images I end up printing in a 3-2 ratio of some sort, like a 4 by 6 or a 12 by 18, which is kind of close, or like I would do like an 8 by 12 or something along those lines. Um, so I don't do a whole lot of stuff at this size, but the big thing is, no matter what aspect ratio you're shooting, um, if, you, if you know that you're going to print a, a given size, then definitely shoot with that idea in mind. Also, if you're not really sure what is going to happen to your image, you know, if you're not sure what size it's going to be printed, or if it's going to end up online, or what's going to happen to it, <clears throat> try to shoot it in a way to where you have a lot of extra space. And that way, whenever any 
adjustments are made when a print's made or when it's put in a web template or anything like that you have enough space left over to be able to work with so that's one of the big things to keep in mind there um, I actually prefer to do most of my cropping in Lightroom which is what I'm going to show you now we've got some fairly typical uh, you know wedding group shots here I'm going to use this one right here though as an example um, the reason I like to crop in Lightroom well one reason I like to crop in Lightroom is because of course the way Lightroom works at any given time you can go back um, you know so you've got the history of your image over here so if something ends up being not right you can always make changes to it later on and you're not losing your information uh, the other reason I like Lightroom for cropping is because you can create virtual copies and a virtual copy in Lightroom essentially just gives you a copy of the image um, but the nice thing about virtual copies is it just gives you another representation of the same file within the catalog so that way you're not copying the same image over and over on your hard drive and you're not wasting a lot of space so let's see here if I right click this image or if I were to uh, control click on a Mac I'll get this little menu here and there's an option here that says create virtual copy okay so now that I've done that I now have two copies of my image now the reason that this is very nice for cropping is because notice that this image right here is basically still in its original aspect ratio it's in the original 3-2 ratio that it would normally be in whenever it comes out of the camera but by creating a virtual copy I have another option or sorry I have another uh, another picture here to play with so for example if I wanted to give uh, to give my client a photo and uh, I wasn't really sure what size they were going to print it but I wanted to give them some options I could take this virtual copy here and I could crop it to another uh, ratio here so once I uh, select my crop tool and you can see how Lightroom actually remembers the crop that I've already done to this image so at this point if I wanted to undo that I could so that's really nice but if we wanted to go and crop this to a different ratio we would just come right over here and you can see we say it says aspect and notice that this little lock is closed and having that lock closed once again is similar to how we were working in Photoshop where it's going to keep these crop guides to the same exact ratio that uh, that we have selected and it's not going to let me crop this to some weird non-standard size then right here you'll see that it says as shot under the aspect but if I click this I can change this aspect ratio so once again using the same example I'm going to make an 8 by 10 uh, image or which is of course the 4 5 ratio so that would be this option right here we select that and now you can see that we have our crop bars looking more square and we can tell that we are at a 4 5 ratio in this particular picture I left plenty of space for cropping so it's not an issue you know we've got lots of extra space there but I can get this exactly where I want it and I can select that to apply our crop and now I have a copy of my image that is now in a 5-4 ratio and I still have my original uh, image as well so we have both options there and uh, the other reason that I like Lightroom is just because after you uh, do get all your editing done then this can kinda of be a last step um, a lot of times I like to treat the cropping as a last step depending on depending on what type of editing I'm doing and a uh, wedding is one of those cases where I usually go that route I hope this has been really helpful for you guys if you have any questions just write me in the comments below we'll probably be talking about this uh, a bit more at another time and uh, I'll show you guys what to do if you have a picture that absolutely has to be a certain size but you don't have enough room so we'll talk about that a little bit at a later date until next time this is Jeremy Smith Photog J the Great, signing off.